Every time we gather, it's a celebration. Whether it's at the third Sunday of the month when we have a baptism and a baby and we're giving thanks, whether it's a weekday and there's a coffin here at the front of the church, for a birth, for a death. Paul says, in all circumstances, give praise and thanks to God. When we gather here, another word for what we do is, covering all that we do is a celebration of the Eucharist. The very word means thanksgiving. When I was eight years as a priest, 32 years old, I was standing at the grave of my sister. She died suddenly. And she was only a year older than me. So although we weren't close as kids, we became very close as adults. So at all times and in all places, give thanks. We're told that Naaman wanted to take home with him the very soil on which he stood, the very place where he received such wonderful healing, a healing from leprosy. And that's what we still do. If ever you've been to Lourdes, people line up for the baths, they want to take home the water with them. If you go to the Holy Land, people say, well, we want our baby baptized with water from the Jordan. And that's sure, of course. But through the revelation of Jesus Christ, God made manifest, we know that there's no such thing as a foreign land, really, because it all belongs to the one God, and we're all his children. So the very ground on which we walk, although it's sometimes hard to feel it, particularly in a big city. So even in a little town like Wellington, the edge of the town. You got to my house by walking up Lime Kiln Lane, which was filled with stones and rocks and hedgerows. And it was beautiful, it was idyllic. Until about 1975, and they decided to build the M54 just over the road. So it's hard in big cities to feel the earth. Perhaps that's why we go to the beach to take off our shoes, to feel it beneath our feet, because the very earth, wherever that soil is, wherever that earth is, it's created by God. Only one came back to say thank you. Let's go back to how we celebrate funerals or burials in England. When we talk about ashes to ashes and dust to dust, we actually lower the coffin down when all the family and the mourners are gathered round. And then the priest or the deacon takes a handful of soil and scatters it on the coffin. And I can tell you, the very sound of it landing touches one's heart if it hasn't been touched up to that point. And then family members and all who want to engage in the same process. Because the very earth from which, to which we go, from which we came, are made by God and each and every one of us. And so we have a Samaritan, not Jewish. We have a Syrian, not Jewish. But Jesus, Jesus says, I've come for all people. All, no one's excluded. No one is excluded. I know we like to do that, don't we? We like to exclude people. We can confess it, of course, and we've done it, and hopefully endeavor with God's grace to change our ways. But the message of the church is that God so loved the world, so not just flesh and blood, but all of creation. And how sadly we treat this very creation that we're given. And so my hope and prayer that we too realize each one of each and every one of us created in God's image and likeness. And I know there's times in our lives we wonder if that's true. When we're trying to discover who we are, particularly when we're younger. And hopefully we find 
and have a soul friend that we can journey with who affirms who and what we are, that we're of value. No sin, no whatever orientation can take away that sacredness created in the image and likeness of God. And so when we look to one another, the sign of peace, know that there's an equal. Both of you beloved by God. When we come forward and receive the very body and blood of Christ, we ask that we too are transformed. Transformed. So that that, that, that faith, that knowledge, enlivens all that we do. That enables us to sing in the morning and dance in the forest. And to rejoice in the life that God has given us. Knowing that this life is for God's glory. And to live it in love, truth, and beauty. And so... The earth that was so precious to Naaman because of his healing. The gratitude that was in the heart of the Samaritan. I hope we too experience and feel that. And I hope each and every one of us can live this life today as though it's our last day. Rejoicing, giving gratitude, being aware of everything we experience. Because so often we take it all for granted. Because... We don't know when we too will be laid to rest. Please like, subscribe or comment below.